Good morning, friends. Today we will learn about the rhabdoviruses. A very important virus come in this uh, rhabdoviridae family. That is the rabies virus or the rhabdovirus. And this uh, virus mainly cause the rabies disease, uh, which affects the central nervous system. Now, how a uh, case of rabies presents? So we see a case presentation that a 10 year old child come in the emergency with chief complaints of difficulty in swallowing liquids, loss of appetite and restlessness. Then on uh, he had a history of a street dog bite approximate one month back. So directly uh, any case related to this if you inquire about because whenever we take the history we have to take the past history also. So in the past history there is a history of dog bite. That can suggest that it could be a case of rabies. Now this rabies, what is this rabies disease? So it is a rapidly progressive acute infectious disease of central nervous system. So mainly uh, this virus or this disease affects the central nervous system. And it is transmitted mainly through the bite. Approximate 90 to 99% cases are uh, due to the bite of some uh, animal like dog or any uh, this monkey bite. So uh, it can be mainly the bite of the rabid animal. That means that uh, animal should have this virus. And it's almost always fatal. Only few cases have been seen uh, where the life have been saved. Uh, it may be just because of the uh, this prophylaxis that is the post exposure prophylaxis has been taken uh, in due time that is in the incubation period only. So this rabies virus it belongs to rhabdoviridae family and this virus has a, a very peculiar shape that is it is bullet shaped and it is an envelope virus. Whenever we describe the virus we describe it whether it is envelope or not envelope whether it is RNA virus or DNA virus. So it is an envelope virus, envelope is of lipid and there are two main antigens are there glycoprotein G and the nucleocapsid antigen and this uh, there is a matrix protein. So this you can see uh, this even the models they can be asked in the uh, they can be put in the this viva so uh, the shape of this virus is very peculiar that can be asked in the viva also it is bullet shape it is a envelope virus you can see the envelope then there is a matrix protein and nucleocapsid g is the peplomer spikes which are present on the surface and there is a uh, nucleocapsid another antigen so this g protein it induces the neutralizing antibodies and the N, N protein antigen, it induces the cellular immune response. Now the incubation period can be variable. It can be one week or it can be prolonged. That is, it can be up to 19 years also. And how uh, this incubation, what is incubation period? That is, once the virus enters the body and when the clinical feature comes. So the gap between the two is called as the incubation period. Now this incubation period is inversely related to the distance of the virus travel from the site of inoculation to CNS. If the distance from the bite site to CNS is near, then the incubation period will be shorter and the clinical feature will come fast. So therefore, uh, in which condition uh, this, uh, when can the clinical symptom can come fast? That is, if it is the case of child, if there is a bite in the child case, then there could be chances of faster uh, clinical presentation. Or if it is a bite on head, neck and upper limb, then as compared to the legs. So as it is close, the proximal to the CNS system, so there will be early presentation of the clinical features. In case of short people or severe lacerated wound, if the dog has bitten in a very uh, lacerated that wound, so there will be more chances and early uh, presentation so the disease will come very fast or if there is a low host immunity or if there is a high dose of inoculum. So in all these cases it will come fast. Now the clinical features. 
So mainly the clinical spectrum is divided into three phases. One is the prodromal phase uh, when there are viral symptoms like that of fever, malaise, chills. They could be in few cases, they could be this nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, but mainly the viral symptoms are there. Then comes the neurological phase. So this uh, viral symptom or the prodromal phase usually for 2 to 10 days. Then comes the neurological phase. So in neurological uh, phase, there will be some encephalitic type uh, or paralytic type uh, will be presentation. So there will be a phase of hyper excitability. That means the patient may be anxious. There could be hyperactivity, some abnormal behavior from the patient side. There could be hallucination and it can be followed by a lucid interval. That means after a period of hyper excitability, that will be normal. The patient will be calm and then the autonomic dysfunctions can be uh, there. So there will be uh, increase in the lacrimation, that is the increase in the tears, salivation, or uh, there could be goose flesh. They can be, after that they can be hydrophobia. So this is very uh, peculiar for the rabies. That is, there will be a fear of water or there could be aerophobia, that is fear of air. Just by imagining of the water or just by seeing the water, there could be a spasm in the, uh, in the uh, you can say the larynx, in the pharyngeal muscles or there could be the spasm in the respiratory muscle. So when this spasm occurs, so that will lead to the in a fear in the mind of the patient. So this is very important. And why all these things occur due to the, because uh, this rabies virus also affects the brain stem. So this will not uh, function properly. And uh, the final stage is the, there could be coma and the death. So the patient can develop coma and can lead to death within the 14 days. Then what can be the clinical manifestation in animals? So in them, the incubation period is 2 to 12 weeks. Now the animals can also have two types of presentation. Either it can be dumb or it can be furious. So um, if it is furious, so there will be hyper responsiveness will be noted in the uh, this uh, animal. And there will be auditory, visual, tactile. Um, the, uh, they will uh, respond to all the, uh, they will be very sensitive to all, any type of stimuli. They will be aggressive in behavior. And if it is a dumb type of, then they will become more shy and uh, they, uh, you will see that they are withdrawn. And they can also have the drop jaw syndrome that is continuously, there is a drooling of the saliva. And finally, they can be comatose. And also, they, it has been noted in the rabbit animal that they are biting uh, people or biting without any provocation. So that is a very important sign which can be noticed. If they are running, they are biting without any provocation. So it could be, there could be a chance that they, uh, that is a rabid animal. Now, this rabies virus are of two types. It can be street virus or it can be fixed virus. So, uh, what do you mean by this street virus? That is, they are those virus which are wild virus, which are causing mainly the rabies disease. And they have been freshly isolated strains in the lab. And they have a long incubation period. And they produce the intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies. That is the negri bodies. Where is the fixed virus? They have been produced by propagating this virus uh, in the animal. That is, when they have been propagated in rabbit by brain to brain. That is, you have inoculated in the brain of the rabbit. From there, you again take up the virus, then again to another animal. So that is why they lose certain properties. That virus will lose certain properties and become the fixed strain. So uh, what is the property of fixed virus? That is, they will not produce inclusion bodies. Where is the... A street virus were producing the inclusion bodies and this fixed virus they do not multiply in the external tissue that means they will live only in the neural tissue they will not infect the salivary gland and uh, there will be short incubation period so these virus fixed virus uh, as they are not affecting extraneural uh, incubation period short so we can use it for vaccination uh, when we want to uh, derive vaccines we can use this virus so how this virus is being transmitted mainly by the bite 
of the any rabid uh, rabid animal 99% cases it is the rabid dog only and there can be other uh, rabid animal like fox jackals all this other than the biting they it could be corneal implantation or through the aerosol either from the bats or in the labs now uh, one thing i want to clear that when there is a bite of rodents like you can say rats so there is no chance of transmission of this uh, rabies so there is uh, no risk so that can be uh, asked usually in the mcqs or viva question so rodent bite never have this uh, this rabies and human to human transmission although uh, in the bite of the saliva theoretically there can be a possibility but it has never been confirmed that it can transmit the rabies virus and by consumption of raw meat or milk also the rabies virus does not transmit now how what is the pathogenesis of this disease that is when the this rabid animal bites any person so there is occur a local multiplication of this virus at the site of bite and uh, from this from the muscular site it will go to the neuromuscular junction that is it's a back transport so from there it reaches to the neuromuscular junction from there it goes uh, with the help of the peripheral nerves it will reach to the spinal cord that is the dorsal root ganglion from there it will go back to the central nervous system so this is how from the bite site first from the muscular site it reaches to neuromuscular junction from there peripheral nerves will take up to the spinal cord from the spinal cord then it goes back to the central nervous system so what is the speed of this virus travel that is the 3 mm per hour or it can be more so it is a retrograde transport it is a retrograde exoplasmic flow in the sensory or the motor nerve fibers in the cns once it when once this virus reach to the central nervous system it will multiply there and then it is start spreading to the different parts of the body that is spreading centrifugally along the with the help of the nerve it reach to the various parts of the body that is you and the part which are more close to the central nervous system they will be high load of the virus where where it is the saliva salivary glands and as you go distal from the central nervous system Uh, the inoculum of the virus also that is the viral load will also decrease so it multiplies in the salivary gland it shed in the saliva and reaches every tissue in the body this you can see that is uh, it, uh, there is a bite of the uh, infected dog then the virus will be deposited on the bite site it will replicate locally then it will reach to the neuromuscular junction they are this acetylcholine receptors so there the virus will bind then through the nerves it will reach to the uh, this dorsal root ganglion and that is the spinal cord from there it goes to the central nervous system there it will replicate then it will disseminate mainly maximum this virus that will present in the hippocampus and the cerebellum and then to the salivary gland to the facial muscle so the all there it will spread it will deposit in the skin cornea and other organs now how we can diagnose the case of rabies so mainly uh, the history is there there will be history of some animal bite and uh, when you will take the sample that is the uh, one is a immunofluorescent staining so it is a method of choice it is a rapid uh, method less labor intensive and what we are detecting here we are detecting the antigen so mainly we are detecting the antigen of the rabies virus uh, and so uh, where it can be used that is after the death you can have post mortem you can have the brain tissue or you can have the hair follicle from nape of neck corneal smears and the facial skin biopsy so in the live patient you can take from these points and if it is a post mortem case then you can take from the brain tissue and you can go for the immunofluorescence then comes the negri bodies so that negri bodies they are the intracytoplasmic eosinophilic 
uh, inclusion bodies and they you can see because there you have to take the brain tissue so that means you can only examine it post mortem so uh, it is a rapid method but there could be high chance of false negativity uh, even if you are not able to detect the neg uh, negri bodies you cannot say it is not a case of rabies it is most abundant in the hippocampus and the cerebellum and what staining method you can use that is the sellars technique which you can use for staining so uh, what are these these are the intracytoplasmic uh, eosinophilic means purplish pink structure and they have the basophilic inner granules so this you can see the negri bodies in the brain tissue isolation of virus that is either it can be inoculated into the mice so where we can check for the that is a suckling mice there will be uh, what can be the symptom encephalitis and that you can also look for the presence of negri bodies or the antigen then uh, another method of isolation can be in the cell lines where you can have the mouse neuroblastoma cell line or the baby hamster kidney cell line so it has a uh, faster yield of the virus and that can be detected by the direct immunofluorescence test then another method is the antibody detection either from serum or from the csf when we are detecting from the serum it could be either uh, due to the bite uh, uh, due to the infection of this virus or due to the vaccination so therefore uh, much better option is for csf because uh, if there is uh, this uh, antibodies present then it is mainly due to the infection only then viral uh, there are so many methods for detecting these antibodies that is the mouse neutralization test uh, rapid fluorescence focus inhibition test another is the fevn that is the fluorescence antibody virus neutralization test and indirect fluorescence assay then viral rna detection can be done by the rt pcr it is a very good method and you can it is very sensitive also it is very specific also although the gold standard is the direct immunofluorescence test now the treatment of the rabies infection there is no specific treatment symptomatic treatment to give some relief to the patient and usually the outcome is fatal so isolate the patient uh, so that the patient should not be exposed to bright light should not they should not be any noise and should not expose to any cold air or water so that it will not precipitate the spasm sedative anti anxiety drugs hydration and urination should be maintained so that's all for the today's uh, this topic on rabies and uh, important part of this uh, that is the prophylaxis post exposure pre exposure that i will share within few days thank you if you have any doubt you can write me in the comment section